everybody, it's Coach Patty, and today we're talking about comma rules. So everyone thinks that comma rules are super difficult. I'm gonna make it plain and simple for you guys. So stay tuned. Let's learn the comma rules. Okay, so there are actually tons of common rules, but I'm gonna to try to make this as simplified as possible by breaking it down into five, one, two, three, four, five rules for you. So the first rule that we're gonna follow with commas is going to be that you use a comma to combine items in a series. Now when I say items, I mean words, phrases, clauses. And when I mean series, that's three or more things. So if I'm combining these two things, I have two decors, eh, then I would never put those together. I wouldn't say I have a plant and a water with a comma. But if I said I have a computer, comma, a plant, comma, and a water majigger, then those are all going to go together with commas because they're items in the series. I have one, I have two, I have three. So when you have three or more words, phrases, or clauses, then you can combine those together with a comma, okay? Simple rule number one, items in a series, use commas. Rule number two is that if I am describing something with two or more words, so two or more adjectives, I'm describing something, then I would use a comma between those. So for example, my soft comma black shirt fits me well, then that is going to have soft, my comma, and black. They both describe this same item. And then of course, if there's more adjectives, it's gonna go into our items in a series rules. And then because we have several adjectives, we will keep on using the comma. By the way, side note, I am a firm believer in the Oxford comma. The Oxford comma is the comma that comes before the and. It is literally one court cases, but if your English teacher isn't about that life, or if you study something that doesn't use that formally, then you know, don't use it. But I think it helps with clarity. So I would use the Oxford comma if you felt like it. Okay, so rule number three, and we've already talked about this. This is how you combine sentences. So if you are combining two independent clauses, meaning you have a full sentence here and a full sentence here, then you combine those with a comma and. If you are doing that a bunch of times because for some reason you just felt like going on and on, same thing, items in a series, different clauses. So you can keep on using comma and, comma but, comma or. But when you're combining two sentences, meaning you are combining them with a fanboy, with a coordinating conjunction. So you have, I love ice cream, comma, and I chase the ice cream man down every time I see him. That's gonna be combining two sentences with a comma and with a coordinating conjunction. All right, so if you are combining a dependent clause and an independent clause, and that dependent clause comes first, that's the important part. If the dependent clause comes first, you throw the comma on there, you throw in your independent clause, and that is how you use the comma rule to make a complex sentence. So for example, whenever I hear the ice cream truck sound, comma, I sprint outside to buy ice cream. That's gonna be my dependent clause, my independent clause, and they're gonna combine together to make a complex sentence. All right, you're also going to use commas to set off introductory phrases. So kind of like what we do when we have a dependent clause at the front, but sometimes those can be really quick, like before buying ice cream, comma, I have to make sure I have enough money, right? Like we can have those quick little phrases in the beginning. So we can have clauses in the beginning or we can have phrases, but we set off that introductory information with those commas. A super important thing to understand is that commas aren't just like a pause in the sentence like they tell you when you're in second grade. Like it doesn't mean take a breath. A comma actually shows that, hey, we have some grammatical meaning that's happening here. Something is interrupting or something is being added. Um, our fifth rule is going to be, the comma also works as, if you would consider it kind of if you were to put this in almost like a parenthesis or like block it off somehow and to take that information out, if it's interrupting information, then that sentence would probably make sense. So, so commas can also separate 
interrupting or just basic beginning information that you don't necessarily need for your sentence to function. Like it's not gonna ruin that subject predicate team, but it's still really important to clarify maybe when or what you're talking about. So with when you're talking about when, what, who you're talking about, and this could actually be called a lot of things, um, but we're gonna consider it interrupting information. So this could be something like a non-relative clause or an appositive or just a quick however, but not like semicolon however comma, just. It could be something like, I know, of course, you stole my ice cream. So, the, I mean, you sometimes you have those little interrupting words, but you also might have entire interrupting phrases like my brother who enjoys cookie dough ice cream. Like, so that would be a comma, comma to distinguish which brother I'm speaking about. And then you get in with like eight all ice cream or something like that. We're, it's an ice cream day, by the way. This episode is brought to you by Ben and Jerry's. It's not, don't believe that, that was fake, right? But what I'm saying is that's another rule. So to kind of go back into our rules and our little bit of extras. So whenever you're combining sentences with commas, that could be an independent clause or and an independent clause or a dependent clause and an independent clause. Whenever you're making complex and whenever you're making compound sentences, we're gonna use a comma. And there's other videos about that if you wanna check out the longer version. Whenever you have interrupting information, meaning that you have a sentence and you put extra information in there, either clarifying who or what someone is, then you'll use commas. If you are separating you know, descriptive words, adjectives that go with an item, you'll use a comma between those adjectives that are of equal weight. You'll also use commas when, and this is the most frequent use, you're combining items in a series. That's words, phrases, or clauses. If you have three or more, put commas in between them. And yes, I am a firm believer in the Oxford comma. Hopefully whoever makes you write sentences is as well. And then, Last but not least, you'll also use commas to separate out introductory phrases. Um, so if we have a phrase, even a word like a Sarah, comma, how are you doing, question mark. So a word, a phrase, a clause at the beginning of something, you'll slice a comma in there um, to kind of separate off that information. And like I said, some, sometimes the most easy way to figure out whether or not you need a comma is to not think of it as a pause, but think about it as like, is this extra information? Does, is this grammatically separate? And then you can use your commas in those ways. But really just go back to these rules. They will do you wonders. Use commas in the right way, not when you're taking a breath. And you know, make some gangsta sentences. We love dope sentences, yes. This has been your lesson about commas. Hopefully that made that super, super easy and more understandable. Let me know if you have questions, comments, concerns in the comment box and Coach Patty out.